Alrighty guys, welcome back to another American Reacts. We're looking at differences between America and Australia. So uh, I'm pretty excited to look at this. There's about a million videos on this topic. So this one I picked just because it was under 10 minutes. I'm sure this just scratches the surface and this is just someone's opinion. But I'd like to see what this person says from an American point of view because if we look at the description, uh, they are from America and they are abroad in Australia. And this is, of course, from Carrie and Jenny King. That's the channel name. Check them out for stuff like this. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw a thumbs up on there as always. And yeah, let's check out some differences. I think America and Australia have a lot in common for sure. But of course, they each have their own flair. And uh, of course, there's going to be differences. So with me being so interested and immersed in Australian culture lately, I'm loving interacting with you guys. So as always, Comment below if you've been to both countries and maybe some differences that you noticed. But uh, let's get right into this. Let's see what she says. If you want to see more videos about my experience in Sydney, there's a bunch more on my channel and there's a bunch more to come. So just subscribe down below or give this video a thumbs up. First thing that you notice when you get to Australia is obviously the accent. Everyone has an Australian <laughs> accent and it's yeah. obviously very different from an American accent. But the thing that's really funny is they have a lot of slang words and phrases that they use that yeah that's that's that would be the first thing of course you're gonna notice that people talk different it's funny because in my comment section people have always said that the we americans are the ones with the accent so i always find that pretty funny yeah of course we sound a lot different than you there's a lot of americans too that sound different like east coast you know boston accents new york accents midwest accents like me and then you know west coast like california but for sure none of us sound like an Australian accent. You guys sound awesome in my opinion, but uh, big thing is phrases, right? They almost have their own dialect of English. They shorten words a lot. They add E to a lot of words. That you wouldn't expect or like know. First of all, they shorten like so many words and phrases. It's yeah. Like saying afternoon, they say Arvo. Brecky <laughs> is breakfast. Brecky, nice. Avo is avocado. Servo is gas station. It's just servo is gas station. Thing. Okay. That they shorten and like rephrase. They also say things like heaps and reckon and <laughs> keen. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite one. Everyone says like keen, which is uh, like down to do something. So if someone says like, oh, okay. we go uh, shopping later, you say like, I'm keen if you want to go. They say things oh, like, oh, wow. I'm keen. Things, okay. That's interesting. So that's just the first thing. They say a bunch of things. My, uh, I was talking over her there. Macas means McDonald's. I've heard that in my comment section as well, to the point where I think someone said that McDonald's is actually branding some of their stores uh, with their signage as Macas. So that's pretty interesting as well. Things that are different. So their language is like English. It's the English language, but it sometimes doesn't sound like it. Anyway, so the yeah. next thing that I noticed when I got to Sydney is that their light switches are opposite of ours in America, which is what? like a really random thing to notice, but it's so funny. Opposite. So when you go to turn your lights on and you go to flip the switch up, it's turning them off. And when you go to flip the switch down, it's turning them on. So in America, when you flip the switch up, it's on, down, it's off. Is That's that right? It's always known. Is that actually right? Is that known across Australia that up is off and down is on or maybe maybe that particular light switch was just wired in reverse let me know if that's true or if uh, that's a false observation i thought it was universal all over the world but here the light to switch on is down and off is up it's just those little things that really make yeah if that's true that is and, you know yeah, so I just opposite i guess a little bizarre America, but whatever right the right side of the road and yeah we also walk on the right side of the sidewalk. I mean, it's not a rule that you have to walk on the right side of the sidewalk, but what you don't realize is you do it naturally after driving on the right side of the road. It's kind of crazy because here you drive on the left side of the road, which <laughs> in itself is interesting to get used to. Yeah. Even though I'm not driving in Sydney. That'd be the big thing for me. When you're... Even though a lot of the world does drive on the left, like Australia does, it would be hard for me because I don't. I drive on the right side of the road. So... That would be a big thing, more more so uh, in intersections. That'd be a little scary, right? It'd be just so bizarre to turn right across the intersection instead of turning left across the intersection. So that would be a little getting used to. The right-hand drive cars, that wouldn't bother me. I think that'd be cool. Uh, I think it's almost a better point of view from that side, even though that sounds like it doesn't make sense. Um, in racing games, in right-hand drive cars, it's always felt uh, a little more 
natural, honestly. In the street, you have to really look both ways before you cross because otherwise, well, I hope so. <laughs> it's so easy to just walk into on. I hope you look both ways. And I've almost done that a few times, but I've learned to really look both. Now ways. I'm sure what she's talking about is she's used to America where uh, she's looking both ways, but the traffic is going one way, and now it's going to be coming from the opposite way. So I, I suppose that would be a little more shocking, like seem more dangerous to her at first. Both ways, like a bunch of times before I cross the street, you think that no one's coming, but they're really just like on the other side of you. Also, yeah. when you're walking on the sidewalk here, instinctively, I walk on the right side of the sidewalk just because in America, that's what everyone does. But here, everyone walks on the left side. Oh, so wow. I've walked it's the opposite so too. People, and I was like, sorry, sorry. And I feel like I'm it's bumping like into easy people. to tell that I'm American <laughs> just by the fact that I'm walking on the wrong side of the sidewalk. This Isn't that funny so that weird. just walking so in along the road can expose if you're native or not? Like, that, I mean, think about it. That's pretty funny, right? In America, it's super, super common. Anywhere you go, you're basically tipping people. So if you go out to eat, you're tipping people. Yeah. If you go to like an ice cream shop, you're tipping, tipping people. is everything in America, in for hotel sure. you and someone helps you or something, you're tipping people. Yeah. It's so common it's like a tip culture over there mm -hmm. but here in australia tipping is pretty much non-existent wow it's not okay accepted of you and see that's different for me as an american that would feel weird you cannot accept it and i find that so so basically you go, you go out to eat uh say with your you know your wife or your girl or uh, a, a couple of friends you guys eat a big you know meal and then you just pay for the food and then leave i understand right that is just bizarre as an American because you're paying for the food and, you know, the waiter brought you all this stuff. You got to um, at least, you know, leave 10 bucks for him or something, right? Otherwise, you're going <laughs> to not want to go back to that restaurant again or you're going to get some dirty looks. So that would just feel weird, right? As, as an American, that would feel weird because that's just not what we do. We always tip. So that would be hard, you know, like getting a bunch of service and then just you know, leaving with no tip, that'd be weird. But it's not so weird in I went to a most countries, actually. I went Circular Key, and I sat there for like an hour, got waited on. It was great service, and there wasn't even an option for a tip at the end. But <laughs> wow. also, that kind of changes the way people go out to eat here as well. You order, and then you have to pay at the counter. So, like, people don't bring your check to your table. You have to really? walk up to the counter after you're done eating to pay not like america where they bring you the bill mm, so i i disagree with that a little bit it, it just depends on the restaurant most restaurants bring you the bill uh after you're done and, and they clean up your plates but i've seen some restaurants in america i'd almost say split 50 50 where some uh you actually have to go up to the front and pay on your way out so i wouldn't say that's too weird i'm sure it's the same there i'm sure some do it and some don't when i was at that cafe the other day I was waiting and waiting for my bill, and I was just like, where is this? Like, this is so strange. And then I realized that everyone was going up to the counter to pay, and I felt kind of stupid. But those little things you get used to, they're just cultural differences. I actually kind of like the not tipping culture because, first of all, things are cheaper. And if you're working as um, a waitress or, like, in the restaurant industry or something like that, you just make a higher wage rather right. than making minimum wage and tips. So people are still making like good money in restaurants here. They're just not relying on tips. So it's yeah, that is different. Uh, that's one controversial subject in the U.S. is some states don't even pay minimum wage uh, for their server position. So yeah, you can have servers in restaurants making next to nothing for an hourly rate, and they depend on tips as their whole livelihood. So it, it's very controversial because yeah. You know, some waiters can make a lot of money, but some are just scraping by, and it's it's kind of sad, actually. Common knowledge that the water swirls the opposite direction down the drain in Australia versus the United States. Uh, but I think the more interesting thing about that is not the fact that the water swirls a different way. That is the funny. Fact that in the toilets here, there's like pretty much no water. It's so strange. So that is America, bizarre. There's like you know, tons of water in the bottom of a toilet. And yeah, in America. It's like probably a lot of waste of water, actually. I've heard that about other countries as well just over the years. Yeah, America has a bunch of water sitting in, in the toilet bowl, uh, whereas most countries have next to nothing, which is better. It's more efficient. Uh, the, the American one, you just have all water basically flushing down, and it's just like kind of a waste, you know. Actually, you kind of a weird it, deal. I don't know why we have so much. Full of water, 
but here in Australia, there's like no water until like the very bottom yeah. of the toilet. Like the very, very bottom has like a couple inches of water and it's so interesting. Makes you wonder I why it's like, like that in America. Like why, minutes. why are they wasting so, so much? helping water conservation. That's just a weird thing. I thought it was just my room at first. Like why does my toilet have no water in it? Uh. It's everywhere. It's like literally, literally this much water at the bottom of the toilet. That's funny. But, you know, toilet still works. The last thing that I'm going to talk about today is sun protection. In Australia, apparently over Sydney, there is a hole in the ozone layer, which is what? kind of dangerous. Basically, is that it's real? kind of crazy about sun protection here, especially on the beaches. In Sydney, there's actually a horn at some beaches every hour that goes off to remind people to apply their sunscreen. Wow. I mean, that's pretty smart, though. So damaging here. And because is there really a hole in the ozone, or is that kind of like an urban myth thing? Uh, if it is, wow, what's the story with that, right? But even even if that's just a myth, uh, it is sunny there. I mean, duh, it's, it's sunny, and it's a dry climate from what I understand. So at most places, it's sunny and dry. Uh, that's no different than other sunny and dry places, right? Of course, you're going to get more sunshine, like in America, in the southwest let's say than you are than you are in maybe like parts of the midwest or or the northeast because you know you have places that are higher elevation out west and it's always sunny for like 300 plus days a year where somewhere like where i'm from it's only sunny 180 days a year so that's just common knowledge to be smart with the sun especially where you're at but but I don't know about the ozone thing. That just sounds bizarre. Because Sydney has some of the best beaches in the world, all the tourists are always like lobsters after they <laughs> so apparently Yeah, I don't doubt that Australia has some tourists, of the best beaches. So that's for sure. Like I mean, there's plenty to choose from, I'm sure. You apply your sunscreen every hour and maybe put on SPF 50 instead of 30. Wow, America, okay. It's not as much of a concern. I mean, we're taught to put on sunscreen, but it's not... I think it's still a concern in America. I think people are ignorant and end up... To, you know, getting burnt a lot, which is not good. I thought that was really interesting. I'm editing this video right now, and I just realized that I forgot to mention that Sydney is actually the skin cancer capital of the world because of this sun problem. So that's like... Wow. So is that true? Sunscreen. Those are all the differences I'm going to talk about today between Sydney, Australia, and uh, United States of America. And just for reference, I live on the east coast of America, so I don't know if that really changes much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And well, I think that's it. All right, well, that is the end of that one. That went by pretty quick, but yeah, I wanted a quick one to just kind of lay out a little bit of obvious differences from someone uh, from either or, but it's kind of interesting as for me as an American that got to go there and live there for a while, what differences they noticed. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Comment below uh, wherever you're from uh, if you notice some differences like this, especially if you've been to both America and Australia. And, and of course, like always, guys, I am loving, loving learning about Australia. Very fascinating country. One of the most unique countries in the world because it's kind of isolated, right? It's way down there. It's it, the only country that's a continent. There's tons of things to love about Australia. And I certainly am thankful for you guys for watching and commenting so much and getting those likes up there. You guys are doing awesome. So keep it up. I do appreciate it. And don't worry, we are very, very soon doing a video uh, expanding it a little bit, learning about New Zealand because New Zealand is very close by. I have had a lot of viewers comment that they follow Australian stuff, like sports and stuff, but they are from New Zealand. So I figure that's pretty common. And uh, it's a, another beautiful country that's very close by and immersed in that same region. Expect some New Zealand content coming up as well. Of course, more Australia stuff too. And uh, leave a thumbs up on there for me if you enjoyed it. I do appreciate it. Helps out the channel. And subscribe for more stuff like this. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And uh, of course, till next time, I'll catch you later.